the, the pool next to the fence because it's so visible from the you know from the front of the from the street. You know, it's I'm about, thinking. It's about four feet from the fence. Yeah, no, I was just thinking, you know, some kid walking by goes, oh, it's hot. I might climb over the fence. I don't know if that's going to be an issue or not. Um, I mean, I, um, most of the time, um, I actually just, so the pool is not noticed. I did put a tar so nobody can see the pool. So basically, uh, on the fence, I have a tar that covers the whole fence. I, it, the pool is not visible to the street. You actually got to take that out and see it. So you cover the fence with it? Yeah. Why do you do that? No, I just did it for the one, basically, um, just so nobody could see it. And then, the, like you were saying right now about the kids. So I was thinking about it, listen, until I get the permit, until I'm able to do more to it, I don't want to touch the pool. I don't, basically, I just don't want to be uh, working with it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want people looking at it or stuff like that. I just didn't feel comfortable after everything that was going on. So I just decided to put a tar on top. And it actually, it just flipped over and I just left it there because that's actually the pool cover. So it flipped over on the wind and I just left it. I just thought, you know, I just kind of leave it there. Now I, I, I saw that on the diagram that the pool is, is next to the fence there, but I was wondering if, are you taking that pool down every, you know, you said that it was able to be taken down each year. Yeah. Are it's you taking down? Yeah, I so will for the, for the winter. It's not, it's not a seasonal pool. It's a pool that you actually you put together and you take apart. You so can you, put, you can take it apart. You can take it apart. Uh, it's a choice. Yeah, you can take it apart. So you plan to take it apart each each season? Yeah. If I if if it comes to that, I will. Is it possible to move it further back along the side yard, but further back? I know I saw there was a tree there. I couldn't tell from the photo what what it looked like a maybe a garden or. A, Place it's, it's, it's a tree and we have a playground right next okay, to it. Now the playground is right next next to it, but the playground, you know, for me to move a little more back, again, it's going to be the same issue because I have a hill. Yeah, it start, the hill starts right after. The the, exactly. It starts right after the pool. So it's hard for me to actually, as I was going to have to, I'm going to have to level the whole backyard, the whole backyard and everything around. And that's, again, that's the neighbors next to me. And I, I didn't want to do that. So I try to get it. about the skyline neighbor or the hillside neighbor? The hillside neighbor. Hillside neighbor. Skyline side neighborhood. Um, for the for my next door neighbor that lives here, I'm like about hundred yards away. So, it's no way they can actually see the pool. If they have to actually walk to the house and see it. Yeah, there are trees. It looks like there's trees between the property. Between yeah, between the no, two properties. Yeah, there is. Um, we did get a letter from um someone in the neighborhood who wishes to remain anonymous, um, yeah. concerned about the noise. I'm I mean, entering, the, you know, I mean, it's if just, it's playing in a pool, you're going to have noise, you know. And the, it's, it's not even me. I tell you the truth, guys, I haven't get in the pool myself because it's just for what happened to the guy told me, listen, you're not allowed to use the pool. So my kids used it once or twice. After we got the letter, I told them once or twice not to use it. So they haven't get in the pool themselves. The pool right now is green because nobody's getting in it right now. So I haven't even been taking care of it like I'm supposed to. So uh, me, myself, I haven't get in the pool. And uh, the noises that she, whatever, she or him, her at the beginning, was the kids jumping in the pool. It's, I can't tell the kids jump in the pool and don't, yeah. don't say anything. Right. No, no, I'm just entering that into the record, basically, that that yeah. letter was received from I someone understand. in the neighborhood. Is there anyone on the board who wishes to? Ask any questions? Well, you know, I was up there and I didn't really notice any issues. Uh, I know the cover and I couldn't even see the pool from the road. So. I saw it uh, through the fence. You know, the fence is a slatted fence. Right, but the, the uh, pool cover hanging over it, you really oh, can't see it. It wasn't there when I was there. There was no yeah. pool cover. So. Yeah, it just. That I was no, I just you know. And you know the houses in the area across the street or down the road, there's a lot of distance. Yeah. I mean, if the house was right where that swing set was, then it might be an issue. But there's a lot of room there. I don't. Uh, I don't foresee that being a problem. Kids are kids. 
Yeah. And there's, a, there's a next door neighbor on the side of the pool, isn't there, uh, Mr. Garay? There are uh, ways though. The yeah. house been empty for uh, my, maybe a year. Even before I moved here, the house been empty. Somebody bought it and they're trying to flip it and they just, they're paying the mortgage, but nobody lives there right now. And what about behind you? Behind me, the noise, uh, the guys next door on Hillside, um, what's it called Hill? Hillside. The next, the next, Hillside. Yeah, I spoke to him before I even started this whole project, and I just make sure he was okay with it because he was actually he's the closest neighbor that I have to me. So I uh, listen. I'm I'm gonna do this. I hope it's not a bother to you because the kids are gonna be, you know, kids are gonna be kids. And yeah, no problem. Go right ahead. He just gave me the green lights. Like no problem. I have no problem with it. He said to me. So I was okay with it. That was that's my closest neighbor. Any, anywhere around here, I'm like a hundred, maybe more yards away from anybody. Yeah, definitely. And you've got a wide piece of property there. It's not deep, yeah. but it's wide. The only kids, and I also, um, uh, the, I spoke to all my neighbors too. Make sure I, I got neighbor, uh, the guys that just moved in here and the people that been here. And to my knowledge that they, I spoke to them, everybody was okay with the pool. The idea is uh, when I went to apply for the application, the guy told me if you want to talk to your neighbors and get a letter and make them sign it, to yours, it's not going to change the board opinion on anything, but it's just for them to know that the neighbors are okay. And I spoke, I didn't get a letter, but I spoke to everybody and everybody was fine with it. There was no problem. And everybody was like, listen, just for your kids, basically. My situation was that when I built the pool, uh, um, how do I say, I, I just rushed it and I actually looked how to do it right. So when I got the letter from you guys, I applied for the permit, I was gonna get everything right, I was gonna do, I was gonna do everything the way it's supposed to be done. But then I found out about the Saria pool. My situation was uh, the kids asked for it. Me, myself, like I told you again, I haven't get in the pool, not even once. Because it's not even for me, it's for the kids. Anybody else, Andrew, Joe, Craig? No, I'm, I'm pretty good. No other comment? Andrew, you have something? Why can't the pool go behind the house but over here on this picture that I'm looking at uh, towards the end of the house where the shed is? For the shed right here? Correct. That's where the hill starts. Right where the, right where they are, you can see the, you can see the, uh, what shed? Oh, no, that's not the shed. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the um, what's it called? The uh, the oil tank. That's not a shed. The shed is the uh, if you can see the other. I didn't take pictures of the shed. Okay. But that's the oil. That's the oil tank. That's another thing. The oil tank is right there too, and the gas, the propane gas, are right next to them. Not right next to them, but a few feet away. So it's a lot you, of things. Yeah. Do you know what the distance is from the end of the back of your house okay. to this? What I'm looking at this is this a drainage? thing that goes along the back of your yard is that yeah uh, it's about 12 to uh 13 like 13 to 14 feet maybe away and the pool just the pool itself it got to be like 10 feet away from the house and also they um basically the, the pool might be 12 by 14 but you also gotta measure like two extra feet at the side just for the anchors to land so the just that it's got to be around maybe uh 16 feet Plus, you got to be away. It's going to be really too close to the house. It's got to be 10 feet away from your house? Yeah, I mean, that's, I, I think I read that somewhere. I don't know if I'm mistaken or not. 20 feet from, I, I'm not sure about the distance from the house, but it's 20 feet from the neighbor's property, but it definitely is. Yeah, it, then, did, then again, if I put it right in the backyard, it's going to be too close to the neighbor's property. It's going to be at least, yeah, it's going to be right there. It's going to be then, right next to him. You said that the pool was 12 by 14, but you wrote in here it's 12 by 24. Oh, I'm sorry. 12 by 24. My mistake. 12 okay, by 24. So it is 12 by 24. It is. It is. Okay. It is what I wrote there. Okay. It's hard to tell from the road. <laughs> sorry. Anybody else have anything on this application? Anybody need any more information? Mr. Dickover, you have anything to add? Um, not at this, this time. Um, just let the record reflect that a letter was sent to the county right. general 
Municipal Law 239 and a response was received uh, declaring this to be a matter for local determination. Uh, the board should also declare itself lead agency for CEQA purposes this evening and classify this action as type two action. Having done that, no further environmental review would be required. And then lastly, before you do open the uh, public hearing aspect, we should announce to the public that they can submit written comments through the chat feature that is here on the Zoom um, platform. They could do that by going to the bottom of the screen and clicking an icon. I think it says chat on there. So we'll open up the chat screen on the right hand side and they could enter their written comments if they wish to. And also that if they can view this uh, being streamed on the Facebook channel for the village which is found at a web page, which is www.facebook.com, uh, Village of Woodbury. And that uh, will be a screen there for this meeting. If they click on it, it'll open up the live stream. And that uh, platform also has a place for, a, uh, for chat. It would be at the bottom of the screen. And that will open up a chat screen for them if they wanna enter written comments at that location as well. Okay. I just had one thing I wanted to say, Mr. Gray. Um, yeah. I noticed um, in the photograph that you had that you have the ladder up on the pool there. If it's not being used, you should probably take that down. Just oh, it has safety to, it purposes. Has, it has a safety, per, it has a, you can actually, uh, the ladder is, uh, I wish I can show you. Uh, the ladder has the steps, you can actually pull the steps up and lock them. Okay. So it has a lock. So it's been like that. I have it right there right now. I can show you if you want. The ladder is up and locked. There's no way nobody can actually get in the pool. Okay. Anyone else from the board? Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak to this application? I guess they would have to unmute themselves. I don't know how. The best way probably, Karen, is to ask them to raise their hand. Yeah, but I don't, see, I don't see people. I see names. <laughs> That's interesting. I see. Maria. Okay, there you go. Maria, oh, Maria, you have something to say? No comment. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Maria. Jasmine, did you have something to say? Because you lit up, your screen lit up. Yes. Did you have something um, to say to hi. the application? Yes, good evening. Um, I just moved into the neighborhood, um, but I've seen um, a house that is close by, I believe is 161, if I'm not mistaken. They have a pool, oh, sorry, 261. They literally have a pool right next door to their house and is right next on the side of their house, sorry, and is visible to the public too. But I've seen Eric's, um, Mr. Gray's, um, and his is completely covered. It's not like the other pool. So, I mean, I see his a little more secluded as to the other pool that was permitted to, to be open. And that one is more accessible to kids or anybody just jumping in. Thank you. Any, anyone else have anything to say to this application? Madam Chair, there are two, three comments uh, at this point on the Facebook page. Okay. You're, you muted yourself, Mr. Dickover. Um, if you would like, I'll read those Facebook uh, entries. Yes. If you please. like. All right. There's an Aaron Lefton who says he hopes you get the variance, even if temp, I think he means temporary, since it is a removable pool. Desiree Potvin is. Uh, chatting a way to access the Zoom chat feature. Mm -hmm. And he says, go to zoom.com, click join a meeting and enter the meeting ID number. Um, there is also, I guess she's giving out a phone number where somebody could call her to get a password. Um, there's a Beckley tree who says, hello everyone, keep, K-E-E-P. I'm not sure what that means. That's what's been entered so far on the Facebook uh, page. Okay. You have I do not see anything that's been entered on the Zoom group chat. I see one message on the chat. 
Oh, it's a mystery. It's from the mayor. But he just he just muted everyone. That's all. All right. So are there there are no further comments from anyone, board or public. I'll make I'm a motion good. to close the public hearing. Second. And I. Oh, did did you want to say something, Mr. Gray, before we close? Yeah. Um. I do appreciate you guys' time at this moment. I do appreciate what you guys actually taking the time to go through this. I uh, just want to put into is when I did this, I wasn't actually, you know, I was just thinking about the kids having fun, do what was going on, the situation. I don't like to rush the things, and this is what I'm wrong when you rush the things. So basically, I'd just like to thank you guys for taking the time and going through this. All righty, thank you, Mr. Gray. Um, so. We had a second. Um, yes. We'll have to do a roll call. Um, Andrew, you, how do you vote? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Joe? Aye. Craig? Aye. And I vote aye. So um, at the end of the meeting, Mr. Gray, um, we will discuss this. It will be public. You can stay and listen, or you can call uh, the building department tomorrow to see what the decision was. I'll, I'll stay in this one. Okay. All righty then. I make a motion that we declare ourselves lead agency and type this All as right, type two. two for secret. I second it. Do I have to do another roll call, Rob? Yes. All righty. Andrew, how do we vote? Aye. <laughs> Kevin? Aye. Joe? Aye. Greg? Aye. Of course, I vote aye. <laughs> All righty. Are we, did we take care of everything, Mr. Dickover? I think you have at this point. When you come back to the matter, you'll review the five factors. Five points, right. Okay. Okay, we now have another public hearing. <clears throat> this is for Ludding. Public hearing for an area variance to permit the installation of a five foot high chain link fence in a side yard, whereas pursuant to section 146.5b, a maximum height of four foot is permitted. Said property is located in the R2A zoning district <clears throat> at 43 DeSanctus Drive in Highland Mills and is known on the Village of Woodbury tax maps as section 218, block two, lot 30.3. Um, I think I saw the applicant here. It yes. says Elon, Mrs. Mrs. Ludding? Looting. Say, how do I say it? Did I say it wrong? Looting. Looting? Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> um, I understand what the application is. Um, my concern right now is that you are the applicant. However, Howard and Nancy Berkowitz are the owners of the property. Are you, you're on mute, I think. Oh. Um, no, I hear you. I hear you. Those are my parents. Um, do we need to get something documented, uh, Mr. Dickover, as far as um, the parents being the owners of the property? They've if already. So you broke up with that response? Yeah. I've already wrote in the letter to you. Oh, we did. Did anyone receive it? I don't see it in the packet. No, I, I didn't don't. see one. It was sent to the town, to the board. To the, to the um, building, building department. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's discuss what we got here first. Um, so you have dogs. Yes. And they apparently will be able to jump a four foot fence. So you would like to put a five foot fence. Yes. Um, and I see that it's a black chain link uh, fence attached to the side of the house. Yes. And will that fence have um, ingress and egress from the house, or is it just from the outside, uh, you know, a gate or something on the fence? As of now. Gates. Two gates. Two gates, yes. And, but so there's no way to get, the dogs are not going to leave the house to go into this enclosed area. They're going to, you're going to put them there from the outside. As of now, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, what kind of dogs are they? They're mutts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know your house is set pretty far back um, yeah. from the 
And I apologize, when I had dropped off the paperwork, they told me that you guys were going to be in person. So I do have the pictures here because so I can show you. Um, but they, they surprised me with it being a, a Zoom meeting. <laughs> well, you know what? I couldn't even see the area with, between the trees and the stuff. So yeah, you can't really see it. Yeah, it's pretty well. You can't see but, it. Second of all, I know for my own experience, sometimes four foot fence doesn't keep a dog in. I just wish I had a five foot fence. <laughs> We do too. <laughs> well, you got a five foot fence? <laughs> but no, I know from experience, it's just four foot doesn't keep some dogs in. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So um, anybody I, I'm good with this whole thing. Yeah, if you look at <clears throat> the, the lot, it's uh, tree bordered on the neighbor's side there and uh, basically, with the trees and the brush that's there, it just doesn't seem like it would be visible. No, and it's, the, it would you know, be, you'd be hard pressed to see it. The percentage of the variance is relatively small. We've done this in other cases. Um, I think it should be um, moving ahead. Really? Anyone else from the board have anything to say? I have just um, one quick question. Sure. Um, as I couldn't make it out on the estimate, uh, are you going to add any fabric uh, to kind of close off the, the view at all? Or the, it was just N-A? It was, it was hard to read what the, the letters were trying to indicate there on the estimate. So is it just a wide open chain link fence or uh, were you going to put some fabric in? Uh, there, there is no fabric, sir. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Well, and it's just a 36 by 31 square on the side of your house, correct? Yes, sir. Anyone else have anything? Questions from the board? Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak to this application? I don't think, um, Rob, oh, I thought you were saying something. You were mute, you were muted. Um, right. I was just uh, commenting that the public can make their you know, written comments on the Zoom platform and the chat using the chat feature oh, right. at the bottom of the screen, or they can enter their comments on the Facebook page, the Village of Woodbury Facebook page. If they click on the icon and open up that screen, uh, they can also enter written comments using the Facebook chat feature that appears there. Currently, there are no, I do not see any public written comments on either one of the platforms. Yeah, well, I don't kind of isolated anything in my end either. There's only a couple houses down there, so. Yeah, it's, it's a cul-de-sac. She's right at the end there on the left. Madam Chair, can I just get some clarification? The, the application is for a five-foot fence or a six-foot fence? Five foot. Thank you. I move we close the public hearing. Wait, hold Wait on. <laughs> We're still... <laughs> Oh, uh, they muted themselves. iPhone muted. Um, do we need I, the pictures keep changing? I keep I, I look at one place and now I, I lost. Oh, there you are, Mr. Dickover. You were over there before, and now you're over here. <laughs> um, do we need to type this? And they, we don't need a 239. It's not yeah, you know, I, I, I don't I didn't know the answer to the 239 question. I could not tell from the application. No, it's it's not, you know. No. All right. I think the county's worried about what's going on up on the sanctus. <laughs> so um, a motion could be made at any time, Madam Chair, to have the board declare itself lead agency and type this action type, type. Off, type two. All right. I'll make that motion. We'll um de declare ourselves lead Second. agency. <laughs> Declare it as a type two. Um, okay, how do we vote, Andrew? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Joe? Joe? <laughs> Craig? Aye. Joe? <laughs> Joe, Joe, are you Joe, there? Joe, can you hear us? I don't think Joe can hear us. Looks like he froze. I don't yeah. think his video's yeah. out there.
All right. Uh, well, we have a, it's even if you voted no, it would be four to one. Um, do we have to come back to that, um, Rob, since we didn't get his vote, or what do we do? Yes, I mean, no. Just leave it absent. So it's at a different time. You, you, you have My phone it. needs to mute themselves. Mayor Egan can mute the iPhone. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Um, so just to declare him as being absent at that point? Yeah, it'll be an abstention. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, there, there Mrs. Looting is, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Um, so at the end of the evening, we will um, go over the five points, the questions that you answered. We'll make a decision, and you're welcome to hang around for that, or you can call the building department tomorrow to find out what the decision was. Okay, thank you. All righty, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. You too. Thank you. Okay, next public hearing is Woodbury Manor bread and bed and breakfast. A public hearing for an area variance to permit a proposed bed and breakfast, whereas said use requires a lot area of three acres and a rear yard setback of 50 feet pursuant to section 310-6B and 310-7 bulk table. Said property has a lot area of 0.738 acres and a rear yard setback of 44.2 feet. Furthermore, the applicant proposes parking in a front yard, Gregory Lane, and pursuant to section 310-40E, no parking is permitted in a front yard. Said property is located in the CR zoning district at 191 Route 32 in Central Valley and is known on the Village of Woodbury tax maps as section 228, block 10, lot seven. Um, I guess, uh, yes, the applicants are here because they introduced themselves earlier on. Um, one says Josh and one says Justin Kimple. <laughs> That's correct. Um, okay, the first thing I need to clear up here, uh, owner and applicant, we have two different, I don't know who's who. So the owner is Josh Shea. Oh, Josh. Yeah, Josh, James, and Christy. Yeah. As it says, Christy, James, and Joseph. They're, they're all co-owners, correct, Josh? Yeah, and then, yeah. and then Joseph is our dad. So I think it might have just gotten written on, but it's Josh, James, and Christy as the uh, app. Josh, James, and Christy. Okay, now, Josh and Christy have a Campbell Hall address. And if it's a bed and breakfast, it has to be, um, the owners have to live in it. That's correct. Uh, the proposal is that the uh, Josh, all three of them will ultimately be living in the bed and breakfast. The, it is a eight bedroom uh, house at this time. Five rooms will be reserved for guests. Three rooms will be reserved for the owners of the property. Okay. So, okay, because it needs to be owner occupied. Correct. Okay. Um, all right. So the bed and breakfast is a permitted use, um, but it's with the uh, R3A zoning requirements. Now the rear yard is presently non-conforming, existing non-conforming, but it's the same existing, it's the same requirement as in the R3A. So do we even want board members, do we even want to discuss the 44.2, I think it's 44.2 feet as opposed to 50 feet? It's the same for both the, the three acre and the, and the CR, one acre. Board members, do you, are you there? <laughs> yeah, I'm not too concerned about the 44.2 feet. Well, it's a, like I've said, it's a pre-existing, it's a non-conforming pre-existing lot. Like they're right. not going to be able to change the setback, but right. it's the same requirement as R3A. And, and if you'll note from the, the plans, there's actually not going to be really any substantial changes uh, in that area any, in any event. Um, there is actually parking that is currently in existence that's going to be moved further away from the neighboring properties and more centrally located on this property. We're talking about this right here, this, where it says uh, existing gravel parking area? That's the correct. Back line. 
Yeah, and if you'll notice there's actually a small sliver of that parking that exists that's on the neighbor's property that will be remedied. That fence there will be moved to the um, to to the property boundary line, and then uh, the fence the the parking that will be in place will be much further away from the neighbor's parking or uh, property line. How high is that fence? Josh, could you tell me how high that fence is? Not sure. Okay. Okay. Plan C. Okay, now the parking, you know, technically you're supposed to have eight spots, um, two for the homeowners, one for every two employees, and five, you know, one for each of the guests. Um, but I saw in your application that the owners are going to be the employees, so you're knocking it basically down to seven parking Correct. spots. Okay, but we've got three owners that you just told me we're going to be living there. So there still wouldn't be enough parking. Well, based on, so our application, the, the, the request for variances were based off of what um, the building inspector had recommended we needed and what the planning board wanted, uh, knowing that these were going to be the, um, that the scenario with how the owners are going to be residing there. Um, our understanding was that it would be sufficient based off the planning board's understanding in the building departments. Well, I think that's one of the, um, okay, it's the, the number is not on the variance, it's just the front yard parking. Correct, um, and it's not a concern right. raised by the building department. By yeah. the, yeah. I think okay. Mr. Thomasberger said something in his, in his letter about the number of parking spots. Did you find it, Andrew? Well, ultimately, ultimately, that's a determination the planning right. board has. Right. Right. right, right, right. We have to determine the variances in the context right. of the placement of the parking side, quote unquote, side yard, and the existing non-conforming use. Um, I see the map the large map that you gave us has the minimum setback line drawn on it and Correct. i see that the parking spots are behind that so you're basically saying that those parking spots are 40 feet from gregory lane correct um, numbers uh three through seven because two of them are on the next to the house and then you have and they're within the 40 feet and this one, these other ones are 40 feet in, correct? Correct, except uh, number one is um, in a pre-existing uh, area already. Okay, right. Are you gonna have access to that parking area from 32 or are you gonna have it from Gregory Lane? Currently, um, what the plan is, is to have access to, if you look at the plan, it is for that driveway that is currently existing, which is uh, usable from 32 to actually be one way. So you would not access that driveway from 32. You would have to come into Gregory Lane, turn into the parking area, and you could exit through that. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Now lot size. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I have decrease uh, in lot size that we've got here. It's, you know, it's over 300%. Um, cool. And the lot size impacts where you can do the parking also. Madam Chair, I have a question uh, for, yes, um, for Council. Sure. Mr. Dickover, yeah. Mr. Brady has a question for you. And Mr. Dickover, I, I mean, I noticed even in the planning board submission and the um, I believe it was either the planner or the council, I'm not sure which, um, with the description of this being a CR, um, which if it were a CR zone, um, single family residence here, it would be one acre, right? And in the context that we're seeing it here, it's, I guess what I'm saying is it's fuzzy in terms of the zoning law, the way it's written, that says for a bed and breakfast in the CR zone, everything follows 
the R3A quote unquote requirements, I'm gonna say. Um, which seems confusing to me because you're basically saying for a one family house, single family residence, it would be one acre zoning, but because you're gonna use it for an alternative use, a permitted use, it now goes to the R3A setbacks, lot size, et cetera. Is that, is that normal, I guess? Right, and I think it's consistent. Um, you know, the way they've made the CR uses uh, subject to the area requirements in the R, I guess it's the R3A, um, you know, the, the CR uses are more intensive. And so the area requirements generally would be greater. And I think that's what this code section does. Okay. So I think that's the reason for the three eight, the, the larger lot requirement. Right. I, I didn't write the code, but I suspect that's the. the yeah, no, I don't know what the rationale was for that either, you know. Well, and if you look at this lot, it is unique uh, in a number of ways. One of them being that it is the only residential lot in its area on Route 32. Um, in Isn't that there section, a house across the street. Yeah, right across the street is, 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 well. is a house. Oh, is there, there's one residential house uh, that's. Is it well that right across the street is the um, is the uh the strip mall with no, a no, mouth no, across, gregory. across gregory cross gregory is actually a um is a law firm oh is it yes right on 32 that's uh bruce <coughs> schoenberg's office who bruce schoenberg no no right across gregory from this house there's a house they built there a couple of years ago yeah a large yeah, house. residential that's that's set back from 32 though isn't that that that's that the lot isn't the lot is in contiguous with 32. But the but the address is Gregory. That's that is one uh our that's two Gregory Lane. Correct. It's still a, it's still the CR zone. You know, it's the same zone. Yeah, yeah but I wanted to build a bank there. What what was that, Kevin? At one time they were gonna put a bank there. Oh yeah? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so it, you know, it, it technically it's not across the street because the address for this residence or this parcel <laughs> right. is on Route 32. Because yeah. it does face Gregory Lane, yeah. And but it is it is across Gregory Lane and in the CR zone that it is also right there. So, you know, the yeah. point I guess the end up the the net is um, it's non-conforming existing, and we have to make the determination. But it's, and it's the other uh, aspect I think the board should consider just with the area uh, of the lot size is that the wetlands area is substantial to the side of it, which creates a buffer from a lot of the neighbors as well. And what the uh, what they're proposing with the use is not going to have an environmental impact. They're not creating any you know substantially more impervious surface or doing anything that's going to have an impact upon the wetlands. Um, so that's not an endangerment. But uh, that buffer does create a protection from the neighbors that may have been intended when the law was written. But the very that would, inside, buffer, that would be a buffer on Morgan Court, not on on Gregory. Correct. Buffer Correct. Morgan Court. Oh, you're talking about the wetlands. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um. When I drove by the property and I looked at where the proposed parking was supposed to be in that front yard on Gregory. And I look at this map with the contour lines, you've got more than a four foot drop from the top of the hill to the bottom. Is that going to be graded or? It will need to be have? graded based off of what the planning board is going to want to have as for, and what the building department will require. Mr. Dickover, can we make a determination based on, in other words, saying that yes or no for the parking and then let the planning board do the rest of it? Or do we have to wait for the planning board to make those decisions before we decide? In other words, if, what they would want. 
you have an application for what I think at this point are three different area variances. They should be each handled individually right. um, and, and decided separately. Now, th this application kind of came up uh, back in the 90s when somebody tried to make that a bread and back bed and breakfast and it was shut down because of the, the neighborhood. So, and the neighbors on Gregory are not too thrilled with this. I'm sorry, can, can I get an identification of who's speaking? I don't know who, yeah, I don't know who that was either. I was looking. This is, this is Bill Van Winkle. Who, who are you? I live on Gregory Lane. Oh, okay, wait, Gregory wait till we Lane. open it up to the public, all right? When I open it up for public comment, then I'll, I'll ask for your um, input, okay, sir? He's been muted. Oh, gotcha, okay. Um, no, I understand, Mr. Dickover, that we're doing the three. My question was with regard to the parking. We are just deciding if we are allowing parking in the front yard and the planning board will handle whether it's graded, what size the spaces are, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, correct? Those would be issues for the planning board. Planning board, yeah. correct. Okay. That's, I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Um, what is on your map here? You have these parking spots and then it says um, extra, I don't know, is EX gravel parking area. It's- um, That's an existing gravel parking area. Oh, existing. Area. I didn't know if it was existing or an extra, what it was, <laughs> existing. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I think I just, I'm just looking at my notes. Um, all right, let me recap here. So we we looked at, before I, I ask you for any more comments, um, the rear yard is um, existing, pre-existing, non-conforming, right. with the same requirement in the CR district as it is for um, the R3A. So, we will have to decide if that's just going to be, you know, acceptable or, or whatever. Um, the second thing is the lot area size. Um, this is less than an acre and we're supposed to have uh, three acres. And the um, other is whether we um, can discuss the parking in the front yard. Now we have 239, Gregory is a county road. So we have to wait for, uh, the county to reply. It was sent in July. July 29th was the 239 was sent. Um, we haven't heard back, but we we will we can't make a decision on that. Correct, Mr. Dickover. That's correct. In the ab in, yeah, in the absence of a response to the 239 uh, referral and the absence of 30 days having transpired, you could not close the public hearing at this point. Right. I also do think it's, it's important to note the um, the description of the proposed parking area as being in the front yard, um, being that this is a, a Route 32 property. Um, it's debatable as whether or not it's the front yard or the side yard that that parking is going to be in. Right. There will be one parking space that's in the pre-existing driveway that certainly would be in the front yard, uh, which is also currently the driveway and access which is going to be the exit point in the proposed plans. It, which would be an exit point in the proposed plan. And how do you, do you have enough distance to use that as a parking spot and uh, an exit, your only exit? The, the, the plan at this point and what's been discussed um, with the planning board is that that will be, if that parking spot is utilized by uh, one of the homeowners, um, there would be sufficient usage of the uh, Gregory Drive uh, exit, uh, ingress and egress, that you would need to exit out of that. That keeping that as an exit is a convenience uh, for a couple points. One, uh, in the event there's no one parking there, it adds for easier flow. Um, and two, it doesn't require turning up that existing driveway and uh, putting in, you know, grassing it and, and disturbing the area. Aaron, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. This is a corner lot, so it has like the two front yards to it, right? So that's why right. we're talking that's about why it's in the front right. yards. Right. 
Right, according to our code, if it's a corner lot, the front, the right. regular front and the corner side is considered front, rear is considered behind the front, and then the other yard is a side yard. It's just the way the code is written. Any um, comments or questions from the board before I open it up to the public? If I may, Karen, I have two. Sure, go ahead. Uh, one is uh, for you or Rob. Uh, because Route 32 is in the front, and since that is uh, a one-way exit out to Route 32, do we have to refer anything to the state on this? The, the uh, planning board will have to consult with the state for a highway entrance permit for this uh, project but you do not we do not all right and because the parking is off of gregory no it's because of the entrance on 230 on, on route 32. no what i'm saying is we don't have to deal with it because the parking that we're talking about is off of gregory correct in other words we're considering those those spots off of gregory Madam Chair, Joe is talking about the exit. If you follow the, where the parking oh. spot number one is, yeah, right. you exit onto Route 32. Right. That's what Joe's referring to. But it's been a it's been a driveway for the last 150 years onto 32. Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything for what we're dealing with right now. But the, the bottom line is we don't have to worry about that. That goes to the planning board. Yeah. Is that my uh, correct? Am I correct to think that way? Yes. All right. Um, I need a point of clarification. Are all three people owners of this house, or is there just one person who's the owner of the house, and all three of them are owners of the bed and breakfast? All, all three of us are owners of the of the home. We're, we're siblings. It's myself and my brother and sister. So you're all owners of the house, sir. No, that's correct. Okay. Um, and one last question for you. Um, <coughs> I mean, it's not a big point, but uh, will there be any outdoor amenities to this like, that would use like the backyard, let's say? Um, there's just some out, outdoor seating, uh, like on the, the porch and in the back, but that, that's really it. All right. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Anyone else from the board before I open it up to the public? Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak? I know. Um, Maria here. Uh, yes. Madam Chair, before you present, uh, let's have a motion, please, to open the public hearing. Okay. I, okay. I don't know that you've done that. I'll make a motion to I'll open the public it. hearing. I'll second it. How do you vote, Andrew? <laughs> Aye. Kevin? Aye. Joe? Aye. Craig? Aye. And I vote aye. Maria here, do you hear me, Karen? Yes, I do. I have a couple of things. As Kevin noted before, Route 32 has always been the only exit entrance to that property that I've seen in my 41 years living here in Woodbury. The entrance on, the entrance on uh, Gregory, I don't know when that was open, but my concern is I've been reading um, Mazur's report from the uh, planning board end of it, they're saying that, and they're the traffic engineers, that route, the driveway to Route 32 should be closed since it's too close to the intersection of uh, 32 and Gregory, and that Gregory Lane should be widened. Right, but the problem is that we are the zoning board and that's a planning board issue. Understood, but I'm trying to let you, let the pub, let you know and the public, whoever's going to listen to this or read the minutes, 32 has always been the front of that house. The owner, Gloria Meldish, who owned that, we entered her driveway from 32 and her front door faces 32. And with enhanced 911, when the numbering was done, we went by Route 32 because it faced Route 32, not on Gregory. So to me, when you keep talking about a front yard and a side yard, to me, Gregory side is a side yard. And to put parking as the applicant wants to put in the front yard, I don't want to see cars in the front yard when I drive by that beautiful house. That, that's unacceptable. 
And then my other concern is with eight bedrooms, eight bedrooms in a single family home and you have three um, family members living there, how does, this how does this, in your mind, and I'll bring it to the planning board, become a single family residence with eight bedrooms when it's listed as a single family residence in the, in the code 210 of our Woodbury's code? Those are, that, was, that was one of my concerns. And the other thing is your rear yard and you, on the side yard, which is on the south side, which is um, you have the pond there, it's wetlands. And to have this less than three acres for a bed and breakfast, it's ludicrous. Other bed and breakfasts had to go through hoops and had the proper frontage, lot area. And to, to allow this to continue as a bed and breakfast, and not to have all these safety things placed in with our codes. And, um, and how are we going to verify that you, you've asked that the owners are going to actually be living there? They don't list their addresses, as you sa someone stated earlier. How do we know that they're going to be there 24 seven? And it's just, it just doesn't make sense. And if it needs three acres, then you need to have three acres. And also with the access on Gregory Lane, that is so close to Route 32, that's used as a bus route, a school bus route. It's gonna have an impact no matter what you look at. And the county, I can't wait for the county to weigh in on this because it's gonna be very interesting. And I don't know if the laws have changed on the code books in the last 20 years, but like I said, it, you, you gotta keep to it. We can't keep changing Woodbury. If it says three acres, it should be three acres. And um, the front yard is the front of the house and to put park in there, uh-uh, can't, it, it's, it's not good. Well, there's no, there's no parking in the front. It's off of Gregory, which is the, but, considered a front. But Karen, let me re reiterate. This house has always had frontage on 32 with a driveway. It never had the driveway. As far as I can remember, Kevin, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Gregory Lane, there was never supposed to be access there. It was always, the front yard was oh. 32. Excuse me, Kevin? It was always been on the 32. Thank you. And I, I know I'm just as old as you are here, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm telling you, you keep saying this is a corner lot. It was not a corner lot. And I don't know who changed it and saying that it is a corner lot. It's not. 32 is their front address. That's what the E911 address is for. And to say that you keep saying front yard parking, Gregory is not a front yard because the address dictates where the front yard is. Trust me, I was on that E911 committee when we made this determination. And way back when, with Chief Jones and Mr. Adams, who did this with me, the front yard is Route 32, not Gregory Lane. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thanks, Anyone Maria. else from the public? What happened to Mr. Uh, Van Winkle? Right here, I, I, I'd be redundant to, to what Maria said. I knew that uh, years ago they tried to make this a uh, bed and breakfast and it didn't get the variance. This has been before the board before? Uh, back in the 90s. That also would have been. Prior to, prior to when the Brodies own it, the previous owner before uh, Kevin Brody. That also would have been before the uh, the incorporation of the village. Right. right. Anyone else from the public have anything to say to add to this? Madam Chair, there is a comment in the Facebook chat feature. Um, Aaron Lefton writes, hope you get the variance. How do restrictive parking areas help the public in this case anyway? question mark and then he continues if you don't get the parking lot variance you could install some very large bouncy houses and use them for the bed and breakfast there's somebody on here wasn't it yeah, I think it was uh, an echo of Rob. No, what that is is somebody has a microphone set and they're hearing me on Facebook chat feature and they're not muting. 
Oh. So okay. may have disappeared at this point. There's the comments from Mr. Uh, disappeared. One second, please. From Mr. Uh, <laughs> Lefton. Uh, uh, no longer Jermaine. He's making comments about bouncy houses and dogs jumping fences and things. Robin Fromer writes, the area variance requested is substantial. It should not be granted. Three acres should be adhered to. Also, parking on Gregory would impact the neighborhood. Lana Melita Penatelli writes, I agree with Maria. Front driveway was always on the road. Thank you for stating all of your concerns. Those are the extent. Yeah, I see, I see one on uh, the chat. It says um, it's just from iPhone. iPhone. If Madam we Chair? Uh, are you still asking questions from the public? This is Maria. No, I, was just, I was just reading uh, the last uh, comment from somebody put on the chat. It says, if we allow one person an exception to the existing rules, we set a precedent for all to now create parking lots on front or side lawns. It undermines the beauty of our residential area and allows for future degra degradation to our area. Home is currently being used as an Airbnb is it an approved B and B? What are the differences in approval for Airbnb versus B and B? Wow, um, I don't know what the differences are between Airbnb and B and B, but that is not um, what we need to decide, um, and we really can't even make any decisions because we haven't gotten heard back from the county. Um, Aaron, if I may. Yes, Joe. Um, looking at the, the plot here uh, from Gregory Lane, just a quick question to the uh, applicants. Um, do they actually have the right to access the property from Gregory Lane? Um, do they own all that property out to Gregory Lane? Uh, it's, it's our, there's already a driveway there. Uh, it's an existing driveway. Uh, well, that's a, that is a question that came up. Um, my question to you, uh, Mr. Kimple, is how long has that driveway been there? If some people are saying that it, it you know, wasn't there going back some years, so how long I has that driveway existed to Gregory? I can't speak past the ownership of my clients who have owned it for approximately two years. It's been there since they purchased it. So it was it was intact there when they 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 purchased the property and correct. Home. That's right. Madam Chair, may I make another comment? Sure. Maria. Um, also, being, it was stated that this is an eight bedroom home. Being a single family home, maybe it's, it has nothing to do with this, but the assessor's office, how can this become an eight bedroom home if it's not listed with the assessor's office? I, there's probably not the, the question for this board, but that's been bugging me when they said eight bedrooms and it's a single family home and I don't know any other home that has eight bedrooms other than on the side of the mountain but um this is it and also with this existing driveway as Mr. Devenuto stated wouldn't Orange County since they own that road would have had to give someone permission to use that road for their driveway and if that's the case where's that approval Maybe the board needs to look into that as well oh, for that driveway. They're currently waiting for the 239 from the county. Understood, but what I'm saying is- But I don't is, know if there was a previous one. I don't know when that road was put in. But what I'm saying is that maybe this board, since they're looking at, this, at the, the driveway side, whatever you call the side yard, front yard, maybe you need to, maybe the boards, your board and the planning board needs to find out from the county when they gave permission for that driveway to be cut into into Gregory Lane. That's all I'm saying. Or if they did. Yeah. Or if they, right. Anyone else from the public? <clears throat> yeah, okay. The only comment I have about the um, the eight bedrooms is uh, this is a home that was built in 1770. Uh, and my understanding is it's been in substantially the same interior design as it has been for a uh, some time and those eight bedrooms are have been existing for as far as anybody knows. Mr. Kempel? 
Uh, yes. It was brought up by, I believe, uh, uh, Chairman uh, Gerber at the planning board that it's only listed on, at the county as a five bedroom house. Why is there a discrepancy between the two? I, I wasn't involved with the planning board, uh, so I, I wasn't aware that that was something raised at that, um, but certainly we will look into why there would be a discrepancy if there is one. And that would be a, a, an issue for obviously the building department as it's an interior issue. Um, there is a comment here. It's, um, it says, this is the Grove family from Morgan Court. I echo all of Maria's comments. They now have eight bedrooms because they have removed dining rooms, sitting rooms, etc. The interior of the home has been completely redesigned. Yeah, you yeah, the, the, yeah there, is, there is um, there is like a study that more of a, an office type space, but it also works well as a bedroom and, and a, like a previous dining room space that, you know, we have, we also have a large, a large family. Um, uh, I, I have, I have five younger siblings, um, but it, it's, you know, some of them could be kind of flexible spaces. One was a, a dining room that, that also is, is really nice as a bedroom. So they're kind of these large, large rooms um, that, that also work well as, as bedrooms. Yeah, I would imagine that would, would be how they'd have to do it. I mean, I, I don't know when this was done. The county writes um, in their listings. Someone, um, okay, the Grove family um, added, it says, um, I believe if we review how the home was listed in the previous sales, it does not list eight bedrooms. I don't know. That's the comment. Um, is there anyone else from the public who wishes to speak to this? We're going to have to carry the public hearing over. I do have a question on your on your EAF on your. There's form. four chats, Karen. Really, not on mine. That's what I got. I just read them. Those are the ones I read. All right, Karen. There's another one from oh. Timothy Egan. Um, okay. Oh, everyone. I'm on not the... seeing that. I didn't take the video. I'll, I'll read it if you like. Yes, please. Uh, he says the definition from the village code on bed and breakfast, uh, a private owner occupied dwelling in which at least one and not more than five rooms are offered for transient overnight lodging and breakfast is offered to such occupants. No public restaurant shall be maintained. Airbnbs are not a permitted use in the code privately to you for your information. Apparently that was to be private for you, not, not part of the public comment, but it's been read right into the record. Um, there's also a comment in the Facebook chat from Leona Malita Panatelli says, I agree with Maria. Front driveway was always on 32. Thank you for stating all your concerns. And that's all that I see at this point. Okay. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hi. Hi. Please Hi. Introduce Hi. And we also reside on Morgan Court. I'm sorry, um, we missed your name. Uh, Norma Fennell, we reside 12 Morgan Court. Thank you. So, kind of right adjacent to this property that we're talking about. And I have a large concern with the idea that it is adjacent to this wetland that I think everybody um, up on the zoning board and the town hall and everybody is aware is a huge flood zone. And by paving over more of the grassland in this area is gonna cause more flooding to the area. And I'm a property owner that has to deal with this all of the time. So I think it's something that the zoning board, planning board, and everybody really needs to take into account because we're inundated with flood waters every time we get more than an inch of rain. So again, by this property that's right next to the wetlands, um, taking away any of that soft, that soft soil area is gonna cause more flooding to our area. Um, and I think that's a very big concern. I understand what they want to do, but I think it has to be also taken into account all of the properties that fall along here that will feel those effects. Thank you, Ms. Finnell. And I also, they did talk about seating areas outside. They do have a large fire pit area down by the wet zones and it does affect the other people living there. So I'm also concerned with yeah, the idea that it is eight bedrooms and if they're living there, I guess there is going to be less people, but I don't think going back, the, the owners have ever stayed there while it's been an Airbnb 
and there has been some noise issues that affects us living there. So it's a quality of living um, issue as well for us living right up against that. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else in the public? Do we have any more comments, chats, or whatever? Because I don't, I don't see them on mine. Right, I don't see any more than what I've read at this point, Madam Chair, either. Um, I have a question for Mr. Kimpel or, or the owners, I don't know. I don't know who filled this out, I, uh, it's the, the, your environmental form. Um, it says, is the project site or any portion of it located in or adjacent to an area designated as sensitive for archeological sites on the New York State Historic Preservation Office archeological site inventory? And you, oh, said yes. So could you explain that? Cause I'm not sure what that means. It's just that the fact that the building is, was built in 1770, it's a historical building. Oh, cause I'm looking at the word archeological as opposed to historical. Well, some people- I did not actually that. fill out that application. Um, but uh, that was done by the planner who was un unable to be here. Um, but I believe that his interpretation of what that was that it was the historic site. Well, because the historic question says no. It says, is it listed or has been determined, blah, 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 for historic site? And that's no. But the archaeological is yes. Josh, do you know if it was, if this has been listed as a historical site, which is somewhat different than it being an archaeological site? So if it's listed, uh, it's somewhat different than just being built in 1770. Uh, being listed, actually, it would have to be on the state or a federal registry. Right, and it says it is not. Right. I don't know that, that Josh, do you know if it's on the registry? No. No. No, no. Okay. no plaque out so the house? No one is, well, there's no official plaque. There is a plaque that the, I believe the family put on that says circa 1770, but it's not a state. Right, nothing plaque. from the federal government saying no, it's not a state or federal designation. Okay. Is there anything else, Mr. Dickover, before we make a motion to carry this public hearing over? Right. Uh, that motion would be in order. I'd like to get some clarification perhaps from Mr. Kimple as to what action the planning board took with respect to SECRA. Did they declare themselves lead agency? Did they type this proceeding? Where, where are they at on that? Unfortunately, uh, I was retained on this just yesterday, so I have not had the opportunity to uh, find out where it is in all of its stages with the planning board. I'd have to look into that prior to our, our next public hearing. I, I read somewhere that they there was no construction, so they did it as a type two. Right. I, I, I would have to look for it, and don't quote me on that. I, right. So, I've got so many papers here, but, so I'm not sure. Um, I, I would suggest then that the board hold off on any declaration of itself as lead agency. Yeah, because but, the right. board may have done that already. We'll just continue. Uh, whether it's an uncoordinated review or not, I don't know. Uh, but we need to find out from the planning board what, if any, action they've taken in that respect before this board makes its uh, secret determinations. Can I ask another question? Um, so before I get interrupted, yes. I'd like to just put into the record that there's an additional chat from Robin Fromer Kraus, which there. says it is not on the registry. Okay, so she's looked it up. Okay. Uh, which agrees with what they put in their um, environmental form. Yes, Ms. Fennell, did you have something else you wanted yes. to say? Yes, I'm sorry, as we're listening to this, I know that um, you all have these maps that have all of this information and a little bit clearer idea exactly what they're asking for. I think difficult to completely picture this. Is there any way that um, we have four different families from Morgan Court sitting here listening to everything going on. We would really like um, to be able to view the actual, it's, it's difficult when we're doing a Zoom meeting and not don't have access to all of the documents that you do to be able to really see this digested and really come up with more questions because once we, the decision's made on this, it becomes permanent and we're gonna have to live with it for the next you know, 10, 20 years that we're, we're here for. 
So um, is there a place or a way that we can view all of the information that you have in the maps and the zoning? All the material is on the website under the zoning board. Um, if you want to contact me directly, I can walk you through it. Okay. It didn't say that in the initial paperwork that they sent us that we saw, so that would be great. So it's on the website? It yeah, usually, it's, yes, it's, right. under, it's under the meeting documents, which is, would be at the bottom of the zoning board uh, page on the village website. Okay, thank you. And, and you have to net it can be a little bit interesting to navigate. So that's why I'm offering to, to walk you through it. So you can either view them online or uh, print them out. Great. I appreciate that, Mr. Brady. Thank you. Sure, no worries. Can I make my motion now, Mr. Dickover? Just do we have anything else to do before we carry this over? Just to add, like from uh, from our family, like we you know yes. we appreciate the uh, the board's time and 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 really appreciate the all the all the concerns that have been raised by the public. You know, I, I think for us, we we really love the historic nature of of the home and, and the property that it's been around for a long time. And you know, we really think the best way to to help preserve it is is to be able to do a bed and breakfast and and help us to you know continue taking good care of the, the house and you know support its upkeep. We agree, like we want to maintain. Um, the integrity of of the property and and you know the beauty that that you spoke to Maria, um, and, you know any any parking that has been in the plans is sort of extra and and we really don't want to use it. Um, so you know adjustments that we need to make there we can make. But again, like we we really respect the the history of of the home and want to preserve that and think this is um, you know the best way that that we can do that as a family by by running the the bed and breakfast. I have the map on my um, screen, so I guess you could take a screenshot. Anybody need to comment on that? It's much easier to download it directly yeah. from the website yeah. and, and view just it. A, just a tidbit for, for Josh, just in case he didn't know that they said that George Washington's men used to stay in that house as they were building the chain across the Hudson River. Uh, yeah, we, we, we had heard that too. And uh, yeah, the one, one of the rooms has a, a seal, like, like a wash, like a, I don't know, some colonial seal on it that looks like it was from. from <laughs> time. That's, that's cool. Yeah, that is. How do I get rid of this map? I don't know. Oh, oh there it goes. There it goes. That's our Mr. Tech guy. <laughs> If I make a motion, we continue to public here. We move the public hearing to September 9th. Carry it over. Carry it over. All right. I'll second that. How do you vote, Andrew? Aye. Um, Kevin? Aye. Uh, Joe? Aye. Craig? Aye. And I vote aye. So we will carry this over to next month. We're waiting from the, from the county for their, you know, input on the drive, you know, on Gregory. And um, I guess we'll see if there's any more public comments also. And we'll see what happens next month. I don't know if it'll be an in-person or a virtual meeting. Well, I hope it's in person. Me too, Kevin. <laughs> Even though Lorraine brought me a nice cup of coffee while I'm sitting Aww. here. Isn't she sweet? All righty. Um, Thank you, board, for your time. Thank you for coming you, with us. All right, we have no building inspector's report. Um, so I guess we will now deliberate on the closed public hearings, the Garay and looting. Um, so Garay is the pool. Yeah. Uh, it's in the side yard. He plans to take it down each year. Um, he said he spoke to the neighbors. Everyone, no one had a problem with it. We did get one anonymous letter um, concerning about noise. Um, I could tell you that noise travels long distances because we have neighbors that are, uh, they're not even really neighbors. They live quite a ways, but they party all the time. I'm not even sure where the house is, but we can hear them loud and clear. <laughs> well, I thought you were being a rowdy one. Yeah. <laughs> and also, you know, if it's, loud and it's you know midnight one o'clock we have noise ordinances correct so that could be enforced you know i don't 
I don't know that this would be a problem. And putting it in the backyard, even if he had room, he's still gonna hear it. You yeah. know, if kids are jumping in and having a good time, you know. So I don't know. What do you want to do? I'm I'm actually fine with it. Well, we need to go right. through the five questions, right? right? Yes. Right, we'll go through the questions. Yes, I just gotta find my paper here. There it is. Okay. All right. So the first question is, will the granting of this evidence produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or create a detriment to nearby properties? And the applicant writes, it will not. The pool has no change on the neighborhood or nearby properties. I tend to agree because I there's agree. quite a bit of distance between the neighbor on the left of the pool and the house on the right. There's uh, the hillside neighbors are closer, but the pool isn't there anyway, so. No, I'm fine with that. Everyone agree? I agree. Yeah. Okay, number two. Can the benefit you seek be achieved by some other feasible method other than the variance? Applicant says no. It can, he said it can. <laughs> Due to the location of the water main, and the terrain in the back, it would be almost impossible without compromising my house or neighbors. Um, he said the water main went up the middle of the yard. It does. And I know there is a hill there. It and it isn't that wide, the backyard. You know, it's it's not that deep. It's it's Can a wide piece of water shot off? I'm sorry, what? See the water shot off in this picture? Um, I didn't see it. Yeah, it's up it's up at the top of the Oh, you mean the diagram? No, no, not the diagram. The picture he took, you can actually see the water main. Oh, okay. I wasn't even looking at that. I was looking it's, at the pool and the deck and the- At the top of the hill. It's okay. the water shut off out. The water, yeah. was brought, water was brought down from hillside. Yeah. Oh, okay. But what is, the, what is the problem with the pool sitting on, on top? He's not digging. He doesn't, he's not gonna affect the water main there, correct? What is the problem with the pool I mean, it's not 10 feet off of his deck. It's right up against his, his side deck. What is the, uh, what is the effect of the, what is the negative effect of putting it in the back of the house? I think it's just the, it's a hill. It go, the house, it starts out fairly level, but then it goes up yeah. the hillside. Hence the name hillside, I guess. <laughs> and and um, the, the gravel's got probably like a two or three inch PVC in it that the drain going around the house to divert underground water. But the distance from the end of the house to that French drain, he, he said he thought it was 14 or 16 feet. Yeah, right. but, but he, yeah. Needs, he needs clearance from the pool. You can't have the pool right up against the house. But if you have right. 12 feet of the pool and then you got those outriggers on each side, you're already at 14 or 16 feet. And that's if it's up against the house. So yeah, I didn't know what the measurements were. He wasn't sure, you know, that's why I said, what was the distance from the house to the property line? And he thought it was about before the hill started, it was maybe 12, 13 feet. And then the hill was another 13 feet or so. So it's like 25 feet. That really wouldn't be enough to put a pool because first of all, you need to be 20 feet from a property line. Correct. And he'd have to dig out the whole hill. You know, it just it just doesn't seem fiscally responsible or, or really even, you know, it's foolish because the side yard has so much room there. And it's not on top of the neighbor. It's not even, you know, he's not asking for a variance for, for, um, for the set side setback. It's quite a bit of distance and there's trees in between. Yeah, I think with the fence there, it makes it a, a perfect scenario. It's the only flat place he really has that's yeah. got the room. Yeah. So. Probably why he has the deck off the side too. <laughs> Not much room in the back. So do we agree that um, the benefit could not be achieved by some other feasible method? I yeah. agree, Karen. What about you, that's Andrew? Um, oh, yes, I agree. Okay. Um, 
How substantial is the variance that you are requesting? Uh, applicant says, due to the terrain and location, it's very important that the pool location is not in the back of the house. The only possible location is on in the side yard. Pretty I much. I mean, you know, I mean, he might have been able to put it on the other side, but it's it's side yard. He's got his deck there. I, I imagine, you know, that makes the most sense. What do you guys think? I agree, Karen. I'm okay. You okay, Craig? Andrew? I agree. Okay. Number four, will the granting of the variance have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district? Applicant says there's going to be no effect or impact on my neighborhood or district. Um, I don't see an environmental um, impact. I mean, one neighbor complained about noise, but you know, even if you have a pool, kids are going to be playing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're gonna have no, you can't stop, you can't tell kids go out and play, but don't talk. You know, it's good. It could, could, do but it won't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm good with that. Pretty much, yeah. Everyone on the same page as that? Yes, Karen. All yeah. right. And the last one is the alleged difficulty self created. This is an interesting answer. He says, It was put together by myself. It's a pool that you could put apart every year. I bought it on eBay. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's self-created because yeah. he wanted a pool, um, but he does plan to take it down. He says he really shouldn't leave it up, you know. It really just looks like a big bag held up with a frame and sticks, <laughs> you know, so. It's a creative solution. It is, it is. If it keeps the kids happy. Yeah, I'm for that. Um, all right, do I have a motion to um, grant the variance for uh, Mr. Garay? Before you uh, move on, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, but do I need to type it as a type two? We've no, we've done all that. <laughs> um, just mentioned though the question about him. He says that he'll take it down. Is that a, a condition that the board wants to impose on this variance that it be removed seasonally? And if so, um, we probably should discuss dates for that happening. I wouldn't. I would make it mandatory that he take it down. Is it a safety issue if he leaves it up? No. Like any well, other that, pool that's up. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, above ground pools, most above ground pools wouldn't be taken down. During this. this this type yes, of above ground, I'm sorry, Craig, I, I thought you were done, I'm sorry. No, no, Andrew, go right ahead. This type of above ground pool, if you don't take it down at the end of the year, after one or two seasons, it's going to rip. It's not made of anything uh, hard on the shell. It's got literally PVC pipes holding it up yeah. and it uses tension. He, he's gonna have to take it down or it's gonna get destroyed. But that's right. up to him, I mean. I, I don't yeah. think it's a condition of the variance. Right. That, that we I wouldn't make about. it a condition of the variance. But then we gotta do dates and then they're gonna want Gary to monitor that. And he's not gonna wanna be bothered going up there. <laughs> Joe, you agree with that? I believe the gentleman seems to understand that it would be in his best interest to take it apart. Right. Um, and it I think it's temporary to me. It almost looks like a, a bigger kiddie pool that you blow up, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I didn't uh, even know you needed a permit for something like that. I, I don't know, Kevin. Uh, it, it's, it's like a portable it, 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 pool. Passport, it would appear so. So the variance is because of the depth. Of the pool, you need it. You, it's treated as a real pool because it's more than a couple of, like two more than two feet, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. But that's from memory, so you know, don't trust that. Rob, I have a question. If, for example, this pool disintegrates in a couple of years, and he wants to put up another pool, an above-ground pool, would this variance cover that, or is it the variance just for this pool? The variance um, actually runs with the land with respect to a pool in the side yard. Um, if, the, if the new pool were to be bigger, it would require a new variance. But as long as the replacement pool was in the same place and same size, my opinion is that the variance would apply to that new pool. 
And that would be up to the building department when they apply. Correct, right, yeah. If you had to send them back. Okay. All right, so um, did we have a motion to? I'll make a motion we give them a, a give them the variance for the side yard pool. Madam Chair, before you call for a second, would you rather have uh, the motion be that uh, council be directed to prepare a decision uh, consistent with the findings uh, this evening that would approve the variance? That sounds better. Yes. <laughs> you don't want me to repeat that, do you? <laughs> hey, I will. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll repeat it, but before you do that, uh, you need to have the prior motion withdrawn. I would draw the other motion. Okay, then a motion could be made by a member and adopted by them to direct council to prepare a decision uh, granting the requested variance uh, consistent with the findings made by the board this evening. I will make that motion exactly as our attorney had stated. That was the cop out, Kevin. <laughs> Doesn't it though? Perfectly fine. I said that at nine o'clock at night. Who seconded that? Joe. Joe did? Okay. Let's take a vote. Um, Andrew, what do you say? Aye. Aye. Kevin? Aye. Joe? Aye. Um, Craig? Aye. And I will vote aye. So Mr. Garay, um, if you are you are here. Um a decision will be a draft decision will be made and we will vote on it next month. So any rules that are in place now have to be followed until our meeting in September. I assume he heard that. <laughs> okay. Second public hearing that hey, we closed. This is looting. Um, looting, yeah, I said the name wrong. Um, yeah, she wants a five foot fence. She didn't ask for a six foot fence, I'm surprised. Um, she wanted a five foot fence and uh, for her dogs, her mutts, she calls them. Uh, it's not going to be visible. Um, let's read these questions and see. Um, will the grant that a fence on the side would not be noticeable from the from the road? There are no neighbors that would see the fence from their property, and it is as it is at as most of the property. I'm sorry, is wooded and on the side of the house. And I agree. I mean, I had a tough time finding exactly, you know, when I looked at the house, it's pretty, it's way back, you know, from the property. And it is quite wooded. Everyone agree in agreement with, with that? I agree with you, madam, yes. Okay. I agree. Number two, can the benefit you seek be achieved by some other feasible method other than the variance? Um, no, as my dogs would be able to jump a four foot fence. Um, you know, I don't think we asked if she could put the fence somewhere else. <laughs> but uh, I don't think it matters. I don't fact, think so either. You know. Anyone have a problem with this? No. Nope. I agree to it. Um, number three, how substantial is the variance that you're requesting? Um, the zoning law states a four-foot fence may be built on the side of the house, but I'm requesting a five-foot fence. So what's it, 25%? 20%. Um, yeah, it's not, um, it's not, not a huge. We've given a lot more than that. Well, to your point, you said most of the time it's six foot request, so. Right, right. I was surprised. Uh, number four, will the granting of the variance have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district? Um, the aunt, she writes, no, as none of my neighbors will see the fence. I agree. And are you with that? I agree. And is the alleged difficulty self-created? Yes. <laughs> hey, look at that. As my dogs could jump a four-foot fence. Um, we. She said that. her parents. Her parents own the property. Um, she said they sent a letter. We did not receive that. Do we have to make? You know, I want to make sure that the owners are okay with this. I'm. I'm pretty sure they are. But. Do we have, can we make that a condition that as long as we receive something in writing from the owners? I mean, well, we, we have to actually vote on it next meeting. So presuming that we would we have, have that. That's that true. Sent in as long yeah. as that's available. So and maybe it, we just, and it, right. just make a note that we need to look for that 
when yeah. we do the final review. Okay. And the applicant is not here right now, so. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, do I have a motion to have council draw up a draft decision reflecting our findings? <laughs> I'm going to get this eventually. <laughs> I'll make that motion. <laughs> I, 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 I almost it got time. it. I almost got it. <laughs> Who I wasn't going to do it this time. Did you second it, Kevin? I will. Oh, okay. Second. Okay. Um, how do you vote, Andrew? Aye. Uh, Kevin? Aye. Joe? Aye. Uh, Craig? Aye. And I vote aye. And uh, we have no more closed public hearings. Do um, I have a motion to adjourn? Well, before we... Motion to adjourn. Oh, wait a minute. We can't adjourn okay. yet? Who said that? Craig. Craig. Yes, sir. Uh, um, um, I don't know since we're not really deliberating, but I think it might be worthwhile uh, to go back to old records and do research on any um, um, variance requests on the Route 32 application from the old town records if we're going back into the 90s, if they're available. Okay. That's a good idea. We can see. Probably the most recent one, Karen, is going to be the Schoenberg one. Schoenberg had that property? No, no. Schoenberg has the law office, and we he get he got a variance for whatever he wanted to do there. Variant a special permit. This is yeah. No, so I don't know what that. I can't oh, remember. Carter, what that was yeah. about. I can't remember what that was about. Well, I, I'm really describing the same. The, the property, property right. and a variance request that was described by at least one member of the public and see if we can find any information on that in the public. I believe uh, council said that it was before the formation of the village. He said it was in the 90s. Right. right. Well, it, it, that's correct. So it would have been when it was the town, but the, the town zoning code effectively became the village zoning code. So right. from just that perspective, it's, it's just a matter of seeing if the and the building department transferred. So if the records are available, we should see what we can find. We don't we really did, have any B&Bs or anything on 32. We did the same thing with, um, with the, uh, the winery application last year. So, you know, there were, there were different things that went back well into the old town records. Yeah, that was a... It's a good idea, though. Yeah. It just might provide more information and background, that's all. Yeah. You know, the people um, who live there seem to know more about it than, than we do because we weren't around, you know, on the boards at that point. So, okay, that sounds good. Anything and now, else? Kevin. Anything I else? a motion for adjournment. <laughs> Nobody second it. <laughs> Make them wait. I'll second it, Kevin. Okay. Uh, come on, Karen. <laughs> Oh, Tim says good night, everyone. Good, <laughs> good night, night, Tim. Good Thank night you. soon. Thank you. Hopefully, we'll gonna... meet. Uh, hopefully, we'll meet at the at the building next month. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to meeting everybody at the building. Okay. And I was going to vote nay on adjourning. Oh, you want to you want to talk <laughs> all, right. all night, huh? <laughs> all right, Greg. I'll catch you online next in September 9th. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Good night. If you Good night, everyone. Good night, Karen. Good night. Good night. Good night.